So I got an email this week. Actually, I got several emails this week. And this one was from a gift of mercy. Actually, I got several emails from mercy people this week. And this mercy person had just come to the realization, compliments of a wonderful clip in the video library, that they process things differently than the rest of humanity. That the mercy gift is made to know God differently and to know truth differently and to know a bunch of different things differently. And it was a shocking, shocking revelation to her. Just shocking. And what was particularly jarring was that she was getting ready to teach a seminar on how to experience God. And it had dawned on her that maybe how she experienced God wasn't transferable to those poor, pathetic, non-mercy types out there. And she didn't know what to do with her seminar now that I had wrecked it for her. And I wrote back and said, yep, glad I wrecked it. I said, do you need to learn the difference between an individual experience that you have with God and a principle that's transferable? Principles are transferable across the redemptive gifts. No problem. But personalized experiences aren't. I said, take, for example, circling Jericho seven times. That was a unique experience. God told Israel one time, do this. He never dished up that card again, never had Israel do seven laps around the city. Just didn't. That was a one-time experience. Don't think there's any anointing in doing it if God doesn't tell you to do it. It's not a transferable principle. On the other hand, forgiveness is. Um, if you repent and you confess, you're forgiven. Mercy, non-mercy, any gift, male, female, rich, poor. It's a principle that works uniformly. And we run into a huge amount of trouble with our reconciliation pictures if we take somebody else's reconciliation experience and try to put it on ourselves when God deals with us differently. And God had to confront Moses about that. He said, Moses, I realize that the events of the last week have been kind of jarring and that our reconciliation bond is a little frayed in spots. Um, and I want to confront you, Moses, over your metric. Because Moses was looking at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and was feeling that he fell a little bit short, that God did these things with the patriarchs that he hadn't done with Moses. Therefore, Moses was saying, well... Um, am I really reconciled if I haven't had those experiences? I mean, isn't that the gold standard? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the fathers of Israel. And if I'm not there replicating that, God said, no, 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 no. He said, listen, Moses, I gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob a covenant. Um, didn't give you the same covenant. You are kind of plugged in under their covenant. He said, but do you understand, Moses, that I have given you my name? And I didn't tell Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob my name. He said, Moses, my reconciliation courtship with you is customized. I didn't get it from a Sears Roebuck catalog. I'm not going to do the same thing for you that I did for them. I gave them things I didn't give you. I'm giving you things I didn't give to them. Now, let's you and me have our own relationship without bringing in a template from somebody else. Spirit, God... is infinite in the things that he does and the way that he does them. He's infinite in the relationships that he has with you. Think of how diverse your relationships are. I have one friend where we express our friendship through silly things that we do with post-it notes. I have another friend 
that a part of our friendship rests on teasing her about it's not a sunflower. That little phrase just means something to the two of us, doesn't mean anything to you. I have another friend that our relationship revolves primarily, well, not primarily, but a part of our relationship is my fussing at her about her dog. And she thoroughly enjoys my teasing her about her dog, and she threatens to inflict cats upon me. We have all sorts of different flavors of relationship, and we are just human. Imagine the immensity, the infinity of God, and all the different ways that God can express himself to you and demonstrate the depths of the reconciliation that he has with you. So, Spirit, I invite you today to take your eyes off the gold standard. I realize you probably weren't looking at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you're looking at that man, that woman in your church that just has it all together, that had this visitation from God, that had this experience, that had the whatever, whatever. Give it up. Stop comparing your relationship with God to anybody else's and let God design a customized relationship with you and let your sense of reconciliation rest on what God has done for you rather than wondering about what God has done for somebody else or looking at what God hasn't done for you. There are some things that are commonality. He's done for you, he's done for me. There's things he's done for me he's not going to do for you. There's things he's done for you he's not going to do for me. And your security in your reconciliation will be threatened if you do comparison. Let me illustrate it with a humorous story from Anaheim, California. There was a gentleman by the name of Walt Disney who had two little girls and he loved his little girls. He was an exhorter to the core and he spent a lot of time playing with his little girls. He never bothered to mention to them that he was anybody special in the eyes of the world. They were his little girls. They loved him. He loved them. They felt wonderfully reconciled to their father. There were no deficiencies whatsoever. And then, they went to school, and one of them came home with a whole different view of the world, a whole different view of what reconciliation consists of, of what proves that there is a deep relationship. And she says, Daddy, are you the Walt Disney? And he sheepishly conceded that he might be. And she said, Daddy. Can I have your autograph? She had been absolutely at peace, completely reconciled with her daddy for years until she went to school and found out that the really cool people have autographs from the really, really cool people, and that's what proves some measure of connectedness is you have the autograph. And all of a sudden, her magnificent, tender, precious father-daughter relationship was flawed because she never had Walt Disney's autograph, the poor thing. And I challenge you, Spirit, get over the autographs and enjoy the intimacy that God offers you. Celebrate what he has given you instead of fussing about what somebody else received from him. I bless you, Spirit, with being able to taste and savor and enjoy and thrive on life with Daddy without the autograph.